Welcome into New Vision Family Fellowship. We're glad you are here as we endure and uh, delve and endeavor into uh, God's Word. And I hope it's a blessing to you today. Grab your Bibles, turn to the book of Luke, Luke chapter 17, Luke chapter 17. And we're going to begin in verse 11, Luke 17 and 11. I, uh, early this morning, I went out to feed animals and um, noticed that my son had left the front gate wide open and I had already let the cow out. And that's not, those two things are not a good combination, (laughs) especially on Sunday morning when you need to get ready for church. You don't want to be chasing a wild cow down the road, amen? So I walked up to the fence and I closed the gate and as I was walking back, I was thinking about, I um, already had the sermon in mind and on my heart and had prayed about it and everything and was thinking about it, but I happened to walk by and as I was walking, I looked down on the ground just in a random place. There was a little pile of sand, just a little pile of sand, like yay big, but it had a little handprint in it. And I kind of walked by and I said, nope, not going to walk by that one. So I turned and stopped and I walked back and I looked down at it. And with almost a tear in my eye, I said, Lord, thank you. Thank you that I get to see that little bitty handprint in that sand. And it really... You know, folks, we don't stop to thank God enough as we're going into the Thanksgiving season. We don't stop to thank God enough for the little things, right? I I know me, and I, I know the way that I can be, which is sometimes not real godly and... You know, I could have just seen that pile of sand and thought of it as another bump in the driveway and oh I need to smooth that out I never had a second thought about it and just kicked it with my foot and been done but God showed me that little handprint and you know God has his handprint on us we don't often choose to uh, to see it or recognize it but God's hand is in our lives his his fingerprints are on us, amen? Someone, one of my grandkids was acting up outside and some one of the deacons said, yeah, made in your image. And I said, yeah, I had to agree with them. It was all over them, you know? That orneriness is all over them too. I want us to look in God's Word, Luke 17, 11. And I want to do something different this morning. I was in researching this Scripture, I. I found something online, and and I don't normally do this, but it's so it was so perfect for this time that I've got to share it with you. Um, and it comes from a website called Joyful Abundant Life. Don't know who wrote it, but it is spot on. But first I want us to delve into the Scripture. I want us to lay a groundwork. I want us to read this Scripture. Luke 17, 11, it says this, While He was on the way to Jerusalem, He being Jesus, was passing between Samaria and Galilee, as He entered a village... Ten leprous men who stood at a distance met him, and they raised their voices saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they were going, they were cleansed. Now one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, turned back, glorifying God with a loud voice. 
And he fell on his face at his feet, giving thanks to him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But the nine, where are they? No one was found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner. And he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has made you well. It intrigues me in reading this that Jesus oftentimes when He healed someone did it in such a way to draw a lot of attention to the healing. Okay? Look at some of the ways, some of the things that Jesus went through when He healed someone. He spat in clay, rubbed it on someone's eyes, told them to go wash it off. Many steps along the way, right? (laughs) He had long conversations with people before He healed them. Right? Great things happened when He healed people. There were even men that ripped a hole in somebody's living room ceiling to let someone down. I mean, it was... It was I, don't, I don't want to call it a show, but it was something to see when someone was healed. Right? He stood outside of Lazarus' grave and He said, Lazarus, come forth! And there was a great many people there. But on, in this one miracle, all he said was, go show yourselves to the priest. Go prove to the priest that you're cleansed. And that was it. I don't know if it seems a little intriguing to you, but it does to me. But when I stumbled upon this website, and and I'm not going to go through everything, but this lesson in this website says this, 16 things I learned from the cleansing of the ten lepers. I don't think we'll make it through all 16 because of time, but it's a great read, and if anyone is interested, I will give them this website after church. Number one, God's mercy is for everyone. All of us. God's mercy is for everyone. It matters not your status. I don't know about y'all, but I don't have a lot of status. Right? I'm glad that God didn't look at me one day and said, well, you don't have enough status to get saved. What the writer here put is so good. He says, these were ten lepers living in rejection because of their disease, yet God had mercy on them. We are unclean too. Our sins are like leprosy eating away at our soul. Amen? I heard a preacher one time liken sin to cancer. Have you ever seen, you've um, no doubt, all of us have seen someone that has suffered from cancer and it just seems to eat away at them till there's really nothing left. I remember talking to Brother Ivan Carr one time, very, very, when I was just barely considering the ministry, and he talked about when he was a missionary in the Virgin Islands. Now this was in the 60's before the Virgin Islands were a tourist trap. Okay? And 
how he would go into, they had special hospitals set up for people with leprosy. Even then, they, there were people in parts of the world that, that had leprosy. There still are people that have leprosy. Can you believe that? And here's these people that literally have parts of their bodies falling off rotting away. Sin does that to us. It really does. I I know a family, a rather large family, where some of the youngest ones in the family look older than some of the older ones. And it's because of their lifestyle. I'm not putting anyone down. I'm just making an observation. And it's because of the drinking and the drugging and the smoking and all that stuff. Folks, I carry in my own body scars from my sin years ago. It eats away at us just like leprosy, just like these guys. Point number two that the writer says here is Jesus is there when we cry out to Him for His mercy. Aren't you thankful? Aren't you thankful that any time, anywhere, in any circumstance that you can fall on your knees and cry out to God for mercy? Amen? I remember, and I've, I've recounted it to you many, many times, but I remember my own personal salvation experience. <laughs> How I thought I had it all together, and God quickly showed me that I didn't. And I literally had to cry out, Have mercy on me. I accept your grace. I accept your forgiveness. Please cleanse me of this rottenness that's living in me. Amen? <laughs> Look at the Apostle Paul over in Romans when he wrote, O wretched man that I am, who will free me from the body of this death? Point number three, Jesus delights in bestowing His mercy upon us. God wants to save sinners. Does He not? God wants to save sinners. Aren't you glad of that? Because, folk, I'm going to tell you, <laughs> short of God, we wouldn't have a chance, would we? About like a snowball in a boiling pot of water. <laughs> I know that's about how long I would last. Amen? God has mercy on us. You know that? God has mercy on us. With one breath, with one breath, God spoke this thing into existence. You know that? He spoke it into existence. He spoke each and every one of us into existence. Let us make man in our own image is what He said, right? Way back there in Genesis. He spoke it into existence, but let me give you a, something to chew on a minute. With one breath, <laughs> in the same breath, He could annihilate every bit of it. Amen? But He, show, he chooses love and mercy, even for those that reject Him. 
Folks, listen. There are there is there is none other group of people that should praise God more and be more thankful than the Christian. <laughs> I, I, I know it's not really a profound statement, right? It, it's not anything to really tickle your ears, but it, there's so much truth in it. <laughs> you remember Jesus talking about a, a, one of His parables? He was talking about Who's, who's going to love the most? <laughs> who's going to love the master the most? The one that's forgiven a little or the one that's forgiven a lot? <laughs> Folks, there's not a single person, not a single person that doesn't owe God everything. We owe God everything but through His love and mercy, we have to pay nothing. We have to pay nothing. These lepers remind me of our little children. See if this comes to mind. Grandma, Grandpa, Uncle, aunt, somebody. You got a little toddler about like my grandkids and they give them a piece of candy or a toy or something. And they get all excited about what they've been given and they run off. And what does mama and daddy do? Well, whoa, 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 you come back here and you say thank you. Right? I had one of mine one time. I had to stop them in their tracks and take away what had been given to them because they wouldn't say thank you. You know what that is? It's really kind of innocent to be honest with you because they get so enamored in the gift. Now catch this. I believe this is from the Holy Spirit Himself. <laughs> we get so enamored in the gift, so, so transfixed on the gift. Look what I got! <laughs> we totally forget to give thanks for it. You know that? Folk walking down the lane this morning... God stopped me and caused me to give thanks for a pile of dirt with a little handprint in it. That pile of dirt will be gone tomorrow, but the memory of it will last forever. Do you hear me? You know why? Because that little hand won't be so little pretty soon. That little hand will grow up. And hopefully Grandpa, Papa, will have prayed and fasted enough for that one that one day they'll accept Christ. <laughs> Folk, are you thankful? Are you thankful? Folk, and I'm not even talking about physical gifts. That, that God gives us. <laughs> Y'all know me, I bellyache about my job all the time. About how I got better things to do. <laughs> but listen to me, without that job, I couldn't do the things that I'm doing. Like paying bills. <laughs> Amen? Thank God that I get the dollars to give to the electric company to keep the lights on. Amen? Thank God I get the dollars to pay the mortgage. Or I wouldn't have a gate to go shut. Amen? And it wouldn't be a little pile of sand 
in the lane with a handprint. <laughs> when Jesus encountered these ten men whose lives were literally, physically falling apart, okay, I'm not trying to be gross, but it's true. When he encountered them, Jesus put his handprint on them forevermore. Think about it for a minute. There were ten men, but only 10% of them gave thanks. When I thought about this, I thought to myself, Lord, please forgive me because I only give you thanks for about 10% of what you give me. Listen to this. We ought to thank God every time our heart beats. Because that next beat, beat might be the last one. You hear me? Folk, listen. I would love to get up here and tell you it would be easier to get up and tell you, I should say, we could talk about pilgrims and Indians and turkeys and Mayflowers and all those things. William Bradford. Godly people. I'm thankful they came. I'm thankful that I live in a, world, in a, in a land that's free. Well, kind of. But I'm thankful God's got me here. I'm thankful for a, for, a, for a church building that doesn't belong to us, a place to come and worship. You know why? Because I've read stories. <laughs> I've read stories of the Chinese and the Russian people that had to go way deep in the forest, walking through knee-deep snow for miles to get far enough out in the woods that they could worship God without getting shot. I read the story one time of a North Korean lady who had somehow come into possession of one page of a Bible. Not a New Testament, one page. And I don't even know what page she had. <laughs> but she kept it as though it were a bar of gold. Folk, that's thankfulness right there. That's thankfulness. <laughs> Folk, I'm going to tell you right now. I've seen people get upset when somebody sits in their chair or on their part of the pew. You know? This is the Smith family pew. My great-grandfather gave the money for this pew, and if you'll look right here, there's a little plaque on it that says, Given by. You go sit on the back row. I've seen it with my own eyes. You ought to be thankful you get to sit. Amen? It scares me to death, verse 18. Was no one found who returned to give glory to God? Was no one found who returned to give glory to God? I don't want to be one of those. I don't want to be one of those. I want to 
I want to wake up every morning with a song on my lips praising God. Remember that old one? We praise Thee, O God, for the Son of Thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, Thine glory. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Thine glory. Revive us again. Folk, listen. What are you thankful for today? I liken it as a bag or a satchel. If you opened it up all you and dumped it out, all you'd see is a bunch of thanks. You know? You know what we owe God today? We owe Him a great big thank you card. A big one. And write on it all of our thanks. <laughs> you know when you give, you see the person on the corner holding the sign, will work for food or whatever. And most of the time you just drive right on by or I just drive right on by. You know when you hold up traffic and you stop and say, "Mm mm-mm, you grab a dollar or two or five or whatever and you roll down your window and you hand it to them. That's your thankfulness right there. (laughs) You know why? Because you're able to. Because God has made a way for you to bless others. When you, (laughs) this is kind of a weird segue, but I was going to mention it later, but (laughs) when you're able to bring to church five or ten K dollars and fold them up just right so that Ronnie knows those are K dollars, right? Even though they may be an M or a B or an A or whatever, you fold them up just right so that Ronnie knows, oh, that's a stack of ones. That's got to be K dollars. That's your way of being thankful that God has provided for you. Amen? I'm going to skip ahead because the ending's really good. You'll have to get the middle. The writer of this on this website writes this, Will I be like the nine and go on my merry way? Because now things look so good for me. Or will I be as the stranger who returned to Jesus after mercy was shown and fell at His feet with thanksgiving and gratitude for what He had done? Well, It's Thanksgiving. It's a special time. We get to count our blessings. Like another good old song we haven't sang in a long time. The Thanksgiving season. But folk, I'm going to tell you something. We need to be thankful every day that we draw another breath. We need to be thankful for everything that He's given us, everything He's allowed us to do. But most of all, thankful for His Son, Jesus. I'm going to end with this, and it's not really about thankfulness, but I want to show you something. I heard this in my devotional one day last week, and it's just so, it was profound to me. I hope it's profound to you. When Jesus was hanging on the cross, nailed to the cross, Before that time, he had always called God Father. Think about it for a minute. 
When he prayed, he would say, Father. When he taught his disciples to pray, what did he tell them to pray? Father. Right? When he was hanging on the cross, he looked up to heaven and said what? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Right? But just before he died, just before he gave up the ghost, he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I'd never thought about this before. I'd never studied it. I'd never... It, it had never leapt off the page to me, but up to that time, Jesus called God Father. Just before He drew His last breath, He said, My God, My God. Now, folk, I don't know if this, what I'm about to tell you is 100% true, but it makes all the sense in the world. Just before Jesus died, he gave up his sonship for that moment in time and he handed it to us. Do you hear me? Because God had turned his back on the sin that was hanging on the cross that we could be made sons and daughters of God. Think about that a minute. Can I tell you this? It doesn't matter if we're white, black, pink, or purple. If we're six foot tall or three foot tall. If we're 100 pounds or 500 pounds. God still calls us His children. And folk, I'm thankful for that. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we love you today. And God, we're grateful that we can call you Father. God, we're grateful for how you have blessed us. Even in the little things, Lord. Handprints in the sand. God, help us to never, never get so enamored in the gifts that you give us that we don't stop to turn around and say thank you and to praise You for everything You've done for us. Lord, I pray that You'd stir in my heart a thankfulness that I haven't yet had. God, that You would make me thankful for this little place called New Hope. Or <laughs> New Hope. <laughs> Thank You for that experience too, Lord. Lord, this little place called New Vision. Lord, you've taught me a lot through it and through these people. I pray you bless every one of them. I thank you for them. I pray, Lord, that you become more real in their lives every day. And God, that they lead their lives as though you're their daddy. Make, make us all thankful, Lord, and we'll praise you for it. In Christ's name, amen. You come, the altar's open.